the path of introducing Hyperion planning and the value that it brings to uh, organizations and companies that are using it currently. So our agenda for today will be as follows. Uh, some introductions, I'll introduce myself, uh, background, I'll introduce our firm, MTech. Uh, then we'll talk about the uh, give you a high level overview of the Oracle uh, Enterprise Performance Management structure, in particular the performance management wing of that and just a little bit on our practice, the practice that I work for, which is the uh, Hyperion or EPM practice and give you some insight into to our experience with that. And then we'll get into talking about the budgeting and planning process today, what people are using, uh, what are some of the issues that they run into. We'll then move on to, okay, now that you, we all know what the issues are, what, uh, what what are the steps involved? What do you need to do to start evaluating uh, a potential purchase of an application? What the process should be involved with? What qualities of an application should you take into consideration as you're out in the marketplace? Then we'll talk about Hyperion planning, a uh, higher level overview, some of the functionality and value that it brings. Uh, we're also going to talk about implementation. And as you move forward down the path, the path uh, that seems to be one area that we get, you know, always get questions on is where people are uh, going down the, the path of potentially purchasing an application is, you know, what is implementation? You know, resources, time, and effort like that, things of that nature. And then we'll provide some customer success stories so that you get a flavor that, that you're not going to be the only one out there that has done this uh, and how a lot of firms have taken advantage of it. And then any questions and answers at the end. So as Eric introduced, I'm Leonard Mono, CP, Senior EPM Specialist. I have 20 plus years of EPM experience, uh, both as an end user and administrator of Hyperion uh, processes, Hyperion applications. Uh, I am an accounting and finance person uh, background. Uh, then I was, had the opportunity to actually work for Hyperion um, as a solutions consultant uh, for a, quite a number of years. Uh, demonstrating uh, and presenting the value that these applications uh, present to a, a finance uh, an FP&A organizations or departments, I should say, within organizations, and then ultimately as a partner manager with Hyperion and, and, and Oracle. Again, I have a lot of years of experience in planning and financial business process and hope to weave that into our discussion here. So in terms of the firm, who we are, so MTech is a company that has been, we have been around for 46 years serving clients. Uh, around the world, we're a firm with 1,000 plus uh, professionals. Uh, I think one of the things that really stands out is the fact that we were voted one of the top 100 places uh, to work for, especially here in the Chicago area. So our, our team as a whole has a lot of years of experience, uh, which really bodes well for customers. The fact that the team that's going to be on site helping you implement, uh, install and implement these applications a lot of years experience, not just with the, the product, but also with business processes, best practices, and so on and so forth. Uh, the firm itself uh, is, spans across five different practice areas that you see on screen, uh, from consulting services, package application, cloud, uh, application development, and management services, and infrastructure services. The group that we work in, that I work in, is package application services. Uh, focusing primarily with Oracle, as you can see on the screen, uh, covering all aspects of the Oracle uh, product suite, and then the other ones that are mentioned there as well. So if we talk, start to look a little bit at a, a level that we're going to be working on, which is the Hyperion or the Oracle Hyperion performance management sector, uh, what you see on screen are the four pillars that the Hyperion product suite really focuses on. Uh, starting in the upper left-hand corner, looking at strategic planning. And within strategic planning, the ability to do set strategic objectives, do some long-term planning, see what the interaction is between balance sheet, uh, income standard balance sheet, cash flow, looking at treasury strategies, and corporate development. As we go clockwise, uh, then taking that strategic plan and actually putting, a, putting it in place uh, by developing budgets and plans in terms of taking that, that strategic objective and actually putting it in place and letting it work in the in the field, uh, and looking at budgeting and planning, you know, meaning you know targets, creating targets, doing forecasting plans, so on and so forth. 
uh, as we wrap around the, the, uh, the screen here in the bottom right hand corner uh, is cost of profitability and management. Again, another pillar that Hyperion has to, to offer. Uh, this gets into a little bit more of the granularity uh, of how organizations work uh, from more from an operational perspective, we need cost drivers, things of that nature. And ultimately, as we move again now to the bottom left-hand corner, is a financial close process. Closing the books, 10K, SEC reporting, GAAP reporting, IFRS reporting, uh, so on and so forth. So these are the four pillars that, that the Hyperion product suite focuses on. But the beauty is that all of these different applications that are focused on these different management processes are all integrated because the, the master data, the dimensionality of the applications, the accounts, the cost centers, the departments, the business units, the products, all live in a centralized repository so that these aren't standalone applications, but they truly do work together. The ability not only to have the master data in place, but also have the business rules, you know, the metrics, KPIs, things of that nature, all in the central repository so they can be shared across all these different applications. You don't need to have everything day one. You can kind of pick and choose what your, your immediate uh, need is and then just start to, if you want to use the term plug and play, use that term. But the thought being, if, if budgeting and planning is your primary focus right now, improve that process. You start with that. And that's where we're going to focus on today's presentation. So relative to the entire Hyperion uh, process application suite, um, our practice uh, is, is a full service EPM practice. Not just implementations, but looking at business processes, putting in technology, doing technology evaluations for these uh, processes, looking at and providing staff augmentation, training services, and it doesn't make a difference if you're a Fortune 1000 company or a mid-market company. We cover the entire spectrum. And the beauty here is at the bottom is that, again, like I mentioned, we have uh, specializations in financial consolidation, budget planning and forecasting, SBASE, which is a multidimensional database, which is the engine for Hyperion planning, which we'll talk about in a little bit, being able to create custom applications as noted, and business intelligence, all the different types of reporting uh, and internet connections with the data. We have our own infrastructure services. These applications are enterprise-wide, thus requiring uh, a, a whole level, different level of, of services relating specifically to the hardware and to the installation of the product. We have our own infrastructure service uh, team, which actually uh, sets us apart from many of the other uh, partners, high period partners, in that we don't subcontract to our own employees. And in the upper left-hand corner, we are an Oracle Platinum partner. Uh, which means that we have specializations or certifications in all of the three primary, primary uh, Hyperion uh, stacks, if you wish, of Hyperion planning for budget consolidation, for budgeting and planning, I'm sorry, HFM or Hyperion financial management for financial consolidation and close, and SBASE, the actual technology behind the scenes. So we have those certifications. And with that and the customer base that we have and referenceable customers, that allows us to become an Oracle Platinum Partner. And that's how that particular certification is earned. You can't buy it, you have to earn it. And we have that in place. So let's switch gears and start talking about the budgeting and planning process uh, in general. So what is the number one tool used today, the year 2013, for budget planning and forecasting? That's it. Still is Excel. Uh, it is the primary uh, tool used today. More and more companies are getting away from this tool and getting into a purpose-built application. But when you open up Hyperion Planning out of, uh, I'm sorry, when you open up Excel out of the box, you get this. Uh, nothing in terms of any kind of metadata structures, no kind of type of business rules, nothing to address the budget, planning, and forecasting process, no workflows, nothing. Everything has to be built from scratch. And oh, incidentally, this happens to be my Excel spreadsheet or your Excel spreadsheet. So there's a lot of pitfalls with that. 
And when you're using this type of tool or application to facilitate budget planning and forecasting for your organization, you run the risk of having this kind of process in place when you leverage the spreadsheet. And as you see in here, there's a lot of arrows going a lot of different places, a lot of spreadsheets flying around, and this is pretty complex. It's pretty difficult to maintain and be confident that you have a, a solid application when it's just spreadsheets flying all over the place where you have uh, a lot of issues with that. And in the middle, <coughs> excuse me, you see a lot of arrows going back and forth in the circles, and that's what happens a lot. And I can attest to that being in the uh, FP&A group uh, at a former employer for uh, quite a number of years. Uh, so it, this, is, uh, this is as complex as it can get. Uh, and of course, you lack control and things of that nature. So kind of in summary, you know, things that, that you may already know is what are, you know, what are some of the common challenges of, of a planning process? Well, first and foremost, it takes too long. Uh, firms, uh, on a calendar basis, firms will start the process in uh, June or July to get it going, get, it, get everything organized, get it out to the field by August or September. Hopefully by November it's done. I know of a lot of firms that will, will um, the budget process will linger into January, for example. And in fact, amazingly, the January budget numbers are the actual numbers. Uh, I can attest to that too, is that has occurred where, where I uh, were the employee as well. And it requires a lot of people, a lot of resources to get this going, get the spreadsheets in place. Uh, the process is not defined and consistent. You saw the previous slide was uh, just a hodgepodge uh, of trying to connect the dots as to who has what, doing circles, things of that nature. It's not, it's not a nice smooth flow <clears throat> and it's very inconsistent. <clears throat> the um, you know the, using that tool, which again you know as as a finance and accounting person, we love uh, Excel, we love the spreadsheet because we can do a lot of things with it. But it's not the most reliable when you're you have 20, 30, 40, 50 people trying to input into a spreadsheet that ultimately becomes their own. Uh, it's a DBA derivative of yours, and then try and bring it all back together. Uh, they may not be reliable. Uh, People can make changes to formula that you may have in, in the spreadsheet. Yes, you can protect them, but they know how to unprotect them and kind of create their own. And they're just difficult to maintain. Uh, you know, you think you have everything in place, but the second a change comes, wow, you may have to change 20, 30, 40 tabs. So really important to, to keep that in mind. Um, Roll-ups or aggregations are difficult. It's not just bringing the spreadsheets together. It's the end result that makes it so difficult. Uh, you may have skewed numbers, and now try and trace it back. It's extremely difficult because there's no audit trail. Uh, there's no real controls or compliance issues. Um, you know, the other thing is that planners just can't get the information that they really need in the process. They're just dropping a number, and so they have to go someplace else to get the number that they need to put into your spreadsheet. And now you have a complete disconnect of the planning process. <clears throat> and the process itself is just so difficult to administer. It is so hard during these processes. That's why these processes take three, four, five, six months uh, in the spreadsheet environment to get it going. It, it's extremely difficult. And by the time you have it all done, uh, the data is obsolete. As people are making inputting into your spreadsheet and they're sending it back to you and you're kind of rolling it up and aggregating it, um, the information is obsolete because the market conditions may have changed. Well, you have to wait for all the spreadsheets to come in, roll it up, See what the results are. Oops! Now something's changed. Send it back all out again. Just I mean, it's just it's just a uh, a heck of a process. And ultimately, at the end, the last bullet point is: if you have errors, that can have a significant impact on your organization. Um, Ten million, a hundred million, five hundred million, five million, depending on your size, it can have a significant impact on the organization as it relates to either getting funding or whatever the case may be. So now that we've all confirmed what the, the issues are relative to the budget planning and uh, forecasting process and looking at the number one tool, um, now we take a different approach. Now organizations are starting to think, well, 
you know, we have to make this simpler. We have to make this easier. We need a, a, a truly self-contained process and not rely on somebody's spreadsheet, on Len's spreadsheet or somebody else's spreadsheet. So as we start to look at the process and evaluate, you know, how we're going to go about this, the three things that, that need to be taken into consideration as you're looking at a potential application is, you know, what is this process, what is the application going to do relative to planning effectiveness, you know, how well the organization can predict futures, you know, understanding what those key drivers are, um, you know, what is needed to, to make sure that the budget values, the budget that is derived is, is solid. You know, what is the impact on the efficiency? How quickly can we get these things around? Can we have scenarios? Um, you know, how quickly can we adapt to market conditions relative to this? And control. At the end of the day, be it planning, budgeting, planning, forecasting, whatever term you want to use for, for predicting uh, a value, you need control. It can't be just, you know, everybody throws things up in the air and see where it lands. You really need to have control clear communication responsibilities. You need to make sure that everybody knows what assumptions can be used. What's the calendar for crying out loud? You know, when are things due? Can I see where people are at? Is there workflow? Things of that nature. So that's kind of looking at the process, how an application should help in the evaluation of the process and apply to the process. But if we look specifically at the quality of a, of a planning application, you need to take a few of these things in mind as you're starting to go down the path. Is you, you need to have an application that can handle very sophisticated calculation. Um, allocations. Some firms don't do allocations. Some firms do 50, 60, 70 step allocations. And yes, they do. We just finished a project uh, where they do a 70 step allocation. They have very complex KPIs for their firm. So you need to make ensure that the application you're looking for can handle these sophisticated calculations and, and make sure that they are done correctly. You also want it to be easy to use. You don't want it to, to an end user to get in and look at it for the first time and just throw their hands up. You want it to be easy for them to use, be it over the web or leveraged spreadsheet. But the spreadsheet is data input and yet because of the nature of the application, being it potentially or hopefully web-based, web um, using either a web form or a spreadsheet that has the same capabilities and controls and security as you would over the web, but doing it in a spreadsheet. Um, obviously, we want to continue to provide the end user, allow the end users to have access to Microsoft Office, not just Excel. People do presentations in PowerPoint. Why can't you take the data from a, an application and put it directly into PowerPoint? Why would there have to be a, a copy and paste process or rekey process? Let the application itself have direct connection to the data that resides in, in, uh, in the application. So let PowerPoint have direct access. Let Microsoft Word have direct app, uh, access to the application, to the data itself. Outlook, for that matter, so that people can see when reports might be available and views might be available. So complete integration with Microsoft Office, not just Excel. You need to have an open technology because no firm that I'm aware of has one source for data. Some people say, well, I'm on such and such company's ERP. Yeah, but where's the sales piece? Where's the HR piece? Where's payables piece? Where? So there's many different data sources out in the in organizations, you need to be able to get that data. This application must take in the data from multiple sources. Once that data is there, you being entering data for the budget planning and process, and you need to have the ability to do analysis on it, slicing and dicing capabilities. If I want to see things by product, by customer, by region, by channel, by for sales, for whatever the case may be, the time period. You need to have that slice and dice capability. And things need to go fast. Can't sit there and push the calculate button and wait 10 minutes. We need we need real quick calculation performance as these databases and these applications get bigger and bigger as companies want to bring in more information into these processes. And then ultimately, you know, you want robust reporting capabilities, not just the slicing and dicing, but 
you know, all, a lot of firms want to have board presentations, bank presentations if they're a private company, perhaps with bank covenants, uh, and have that robust reporting capability and a high quality presentation uh, reporting. The other, you know, now that we split, switched from, from the, the, that kind of functionality, you want to ensure that from an end user perspective that the end user can maintain this. It doesn't have to be a bunch of programming developers to do this. But the end user has the ability to maintain uh, or do maintenance on these particular applications. An application that flexes with the organization. Organizations seem to be changing their org structure more and more as time goes on. Every year, every 18 months, you need an application that's going to be able to flex with it and be easy uh, to make those changes and not impair any of the data that exists but it goes through. And again, load maintenance. Applications aren't created one time. Or the underlying architecture is not created one time. There's upgrades. There's planning cycle changes and setups and data structure changes. You need to make sure that the application that you happen to be looking at can facilitate that. So with that said, let's look at uh, what we recommend being the premier application for the budget planning and uh, forecasting process, and, and that would be Oracle's Hyperion Plan. Um, it is the number one budget, uh, budget planning and forecasting tool on the marketplace. That's not us saying it. That's the market analyst saying it. And the beauty here is that with Oracle Hyperion, Hyperion, Oracle Hyperion Planning, uh, what what ma makes it so flexible is the fact that it is a scalable web architecture where data entry can be performed over the web or in Excel if need be, and yet have all the same controls regardless if you're on the web or you're in Excel. If you want to start, uh, start out with 25 users and grow to hundreds, thousands, this application can do that. No need to only look at it from a short-term perspective, but also keep in mind that from a long-term you want to grow this. Maybe you want to capture more information as time goes on. That's the beauty of having a truly scalable web architecture or infrastructure in place. And Hyperion Planning is a platform. It's a platform across the entire organization, the entire enterprise. It's not just for a department. It can go across your different organizations. It can, you can have uh, Hyperion Planning and have separate applications if you so choose for different uh, business units. They may not even be the same type of industry. If you're a conglomerate or you have multiple business units that do different things, you can have that flexibility. And yet, bring all that data together for consolidate, all in a nice controlled environment. By having a platform, for example, um, which Hyperion Planning is, uh, your budget planning and forecasting processes will improve dramatically. Um, cycle times will be faster. You can react to marketing, uh, to market events. Uh, if you're sensitive to the price of fuel, the price of commodities, interest rates, whatever the case may be, you have the ability to react very quickly and get up to the up to minute up to the minute results and predictability with regards to how things how you're impacted by oil price changes, commodity changes, interest interest rate changes so on and so forth. And you're going to have better accuracy. Again, it's not let me do the budget and kind of walk away. Budgeting is a control process, but you need ultimately to be able to forecast frequently. That's what everybody's goal is. Let's forecast as quickly as much as possible. Um, and you will, and Hyperion Planning provides the platform to do that. It's used by over 3,000 organizations currently, so it's tried true and tested. Now, what makes it, uh, what, what's the capability, what makes it uh, able to improve the process? The fact that there is version control, what if capabilities, and a process management out of the box in the application. Unlike Excel, which I showed you earlier, you get nothing. Um, this has built-in version control, the ability to do what if capabilities or analysis, to have process management, a workflow, so that as you're allowing individuals in the field to begin the budget input process, forecasting input process, there is process management. I report to, to Joe. So when I'm done with my plan, I send it to Joe for approval, for review and approval. And we go back and forth through the process management. We don't have to wait a month, six weeks, to 
to find out if we're good or bad. We can do it almost almost real time. Now, what's what's behind the scenes to power this uh, this application's enterprise wide application? It's S Base. S Base is the market leading and award winning analytical platform. It is number one in the marketplace. It is an enterprise wide uh, database, multi dimensional database. Um, it is was recognized as one of the top ten uh, inventions or creations of the decade by uh, by one of the IT magazines, and it's the powerhouse because it, it provides a mechanism for powerful reporting analysis, ultimately giving the FP&A group and users don't have to be an FP&A more time to analyze instead of doing 80 percent putting it together 20 percent analysis or 90 10 which is more like it. You can reverse it so that you put more time on the analysis side of things. The other thing that brings that's important here to understand is the fact that these applications are allow Hyperion to create special purpose modules for fast deployment, workforce planning, for example, if you need to plan at a granular level of the workforce, project financial planning, and capital X planning. So I mentioned what S-Base, so quickly, what is S-Base? Like I said, it's a multi-dimensional database. It's organized by hierarchies. So each dimension is an analysis category. So if you look at the block, the block or the cube below, each one of those um, areas that are mentioned there, scenario, region, employee, measures, versions, those are dimensions. And within those dimensions, you have members or metadata that you know, all the different scenarios or all the different regions and it's organized in a hierarchical structure so it's very easy to drill up or down in that type of environment and it also bodes well for consistent data uh, business rules data definitions and calculations it, the engine as space is optimized for query and calculation performance allocations can be very complex and take a long time to run with this type of database the applications the the calculations are, are calculated very quickly, very fast. And it's a low learning curve because you don't need any kind of special query language, not C++ or anything like that. Again, I'm an accounting and finance person and these are things that, uh, that we can do. So the beauty here is with the S-Base database, you can S-Base database will mirror what your organization is. You create it to meet your requirements and that equals business. So let's take a step back here and, and take a quick glimpse of Hyperion planning uh, and some of this, the, what it looks like as you're working in this environment. So the first thing that, that bodes well in terms of productivity efficiencies is the fact that there is what is called task list or guided navigation for the end user. Each person will know exactly what they're responsible for in the budget process. Not here's the 25 to 30 to 50 tab spreadsheet and touch tab 6 and 14 and 22 and 23 and 28 and 37. No. This is specifically by user what you're responsible for. And not only is it giving them the task list or what they need to do uh, in terms of completing their uh, portion of the forecast, rolling forecast, budget, or plan, tells you when it's due date. Form specific instructions, provides you alerts and monitoring uh, progress so that you know that, hey, you have a week to go before this is due. You've got two days, you've got one hour before it's due. So there's all that process uh, being built into the application, built into this forecast. So really guided navigation for the end user, be very efficient. It also has a very intuitive web interface. So it looks like a spreadsheet not a spreadsheet, but it's well controlled so that the items listed in white are data input, anything grayed out, grayed out, can't touch it. There's calculations or something behind the scenes, but it's not like a spreadsheet where you put your, 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 uh, uh, your mouse over a, a grayed out cell and you can see the calculation or try and manipulate. You can't. It's all held within the database. It's a representation of the database. And the beauty here is that is that across the top where you see the page headings, the MA, the audio bookshelves, then users just using drop downs to get to the point that they need to and only get to the items that they have security on. It's not a free-for-all, it can't see everything, it's all based on security. 
with re with uh, with regard to the web forms, the controlled environment of a nice web form and being intuitive, this same web form that we saw earlier can be used in the spreadsheet environment. So we don't take Excel, the spreadsheet away from the end user. What we've done is we've made it tremendously e tremendously more easier for them to work in the environment and have all those controls in place that that are required. And you eliminate a lot of the issues that come along with, with Excel. The form layouts are almost identical. The options are identical. The security is identical. The business rule, it, it looks, it just mirrors each other. So it really doesn't matter what the preference is of the end user. We can accommodate those that want to stay in the web or those that want to stay in the spreadsheet environment. You can turn off spreadsheet usage if you want, but it's really, it's really best if you have the flexibility for that perspective. And another point is that you know, there is a complete process management or work workflow capabilities so that when I am finished with my data input and when I am doing data input incidentally, I have the ability to put in uh, notes or text at the cell level. I can put in notes or, or uh, information at a higher level. I can put in all kinds of commentary um, relative to why I did what I did within the application itself. Um, and when I am done with that process and I invoke process management, what you see on screen is a, uh, a representation of the promotional path from the end user, Henry Jefferson, all the way to the end, that these in the end users in this progression will be able to see what my assumptions are, why I did what I did. And that's the beauty of it. And this is why things can be sped up so fast, so quickly. Because you don't have to think, you don't have to guess why did Len put this number in. Well, I, I'll explain it. And oh, by the way, if, I, if you're asking me to put in a number for some particular expense, and I have to build that number up, I can do that Be within the application. I don't have to stay outside the application to build it up because there's something called supporting detail in the application where I can actually build up what value is going to go into the application. And again, full visibility into the assumptions across the board, all based on security, but the point being that is all in place. And ultimately, what we need, what this application is going to provide, is the ability to do more analysis of the, the information, provide robust reporting capabilities within the application itself, via the dashboard, which you see on the screen, via more financial standard type of reporting, financial reporting processes where you have nice presentation quality, and for those that want to stay in the Excel environment, the ability to do ad hoc analysis within the spreadsheet, but a direct link or connection to that particular database and in an ad hoc environment where you're just dropping and dragging the dimensions and getting the values uh, in there. So three different ways of getting analysis, if necessary, if need be, whatever makes sense for the end user, but really high-powered uh, capabilities when it comes to budgeting to reporting and analysis capabilities. So, What's the impact of Oracle Hyperion planning on the process? So again, I mentioned effectiveness, efficiency, and control. So what is the effectiveness part? Well, specific to that area, we have much greater what-if capabilities and flexibility to do that. You have true versioning control. I don't know of any organization in the past 20 plus years that I've been doing this that has done a budget, a plan, or forecast one time. So that's it. We're done. Impossible. I've never seen it. Uh, it doesn't mean it can't happen. But the point being that you have true version control. And you don't have to start the wheel all over again from scratch. You can copy version 1 to version 2 and then move forward with version 2. You can have as many versions as you see fit. But the beauty here is that in the Excel environment, I know of some firms that had version 25, version 26. Not so much because they wanted to... Uh, you know, make all these changes is because of the application, the tool they were using. There was no version control. So any little change, and you had to have another version. Um, you don't have to do that here. Companies that are using Hyperion planning are getting away from 20, 30 different versions and getting to four or five different versions. Um, 
The other thing with effectiveness is the fact that you have much greater transparency into the information that's being provided. You can see what people are doing, why they do what they, they, they did, why, what assumptions they are using. And that bodes well for the integrity and the reliability of the information and the data itself. Uh, that's one of the biggest pitfalls I've heard through the years with regards to the spreadsheet. I've heard so many FP&A departments say, oh yeah, this is the best thing. Boy, we put a lot of time and effort. How secure are you? How conf confident are you in the numbers? Well, you know, there's always a chance that some numbers are skewed or somebody did something. Well, okay. When you have a, a self-contained environment, like Hyperion Planning, the, the data reliability and the, the integrity of the data, the confidence in the numbers climbs dramatically. From an efficiency perspective, it eliminates the, the handoff from, an, from one Excel user to another Excel user. It eliminates the need for rekeying of data. Hey, I just got Joe's spreadsheet. I got to put it in my spreadsheet because I have a consolidator. But it's maybe it doesn't line up. Oh, okay, now I have to go through and, and rekey it because it don't, didn't line up. Joe put in an extra row or an extra column somewhere in the 25 tabs. I don't know. I'll just rekey it. Oh, there you go. It's inefficient and it's error prone. And you know, it also eliminates multiple Excel processes. An Excel process for version one, version two the forecast, the rolling forecast, the plan. You eliminate that completely. Um, it's really quick to get into the analysis mode of the process itself uh, because of the capabilities and, and forecasting capabilities that are in here. So it's easy to use and you can get to analysis much, 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 much quicker than in, uh, in this Excel processes. And you also have the ability to provide um, flexible uh, capabilities relative to seasonality, uh, trending, cost drivers, more of a driver base if necessary. Uh, so it really provides a lot of flexibility uh, when, it, when these type of things are important to you, you know, get seasonality, trending, and cost drivers. So it really it makes the process very, very efficient. When we look at control, again, that's something that everybody asks about. You know, it, you know, is there control? Is there security? Absolutely. Security is is, is uh, put in at a group level. You assign end users to the group. Um, but the nice thing is that control is owned by the business unit, by the business users. So they have complete control over the different the process. Uh, there's control in the sense that you know, the bullet points is planning documentation, but being able to put in textual information, putting in commentary, things of that nature. So you can have control. You can understand why people are doing things. Um, robust, not only robust security, but complete audit capabilities. So you can see exactly um, where people are in the process, who did what, when things were made. And the system, from the maintenance perspective, is centralized. It's not a piece goes over here, a piece goes over there. It's all centralized into uh, a, a single self-contained application, which really makes it uh, a very, very robust, a robust process. So let's switch gears and talk about implementation. This is the one part that a lot of people, um, for whatever reason, uh, forget. But it's really important that you understand how, how and what the processes are. It all starts with design. Everything has to have a solid design. Design can be anywhere from one to three to four weeks to six weeks, depending on the size of your organization and what you want to tackle in the, uh, in the, uh, the implementation. Um, so design, again, a week to two weeks, typically the three weeks at most. Occasionally you get the four to six weeks, but that's when you're looking at a much, much, much bigger implementation day one. And then installation, the installation of the product. Like I said, this is where the infrastructure team really comes into play. Uh, our team can help with sizing of the hardware um, and then also doing the actual installation of the, the software. And once that's in place, the application build begins. Um, application builds can be anywhere from, um, geez, you know, several weeks, 10, 10 to 16 weeks it could be, uh, depending on, on uh, the application itself. But it's all a good, a solid application build is all predicated on solid design. If you don't have a great design, or don't put the time in the design up front, 
the application process, the build process could be a little touchy. Once that's in place, then you need to test. We absolutely have to test. And testing could take a week, two weeks, three weeks, depending on, again, the size of the application. And once that's all in place, then it's time to deploy the application and go live, but also train. And that's something that our team is doing more and more. We are providing uh, training services on your application, uh, developing training materials for your application. Again, this would be end user. Administrative training, uh, we really recommend that you, the team goes to Oracle training. But from an end user perspective, we, we do provide that type of services. So implementations can go anywhere you know, up to 16, 17 weeks, depending on what you want to do. There's implementations that have gone on you know, a few months five months because of the, the amount of information uh, of the process that companies want to incorporate. So really it's up to you. We'll work with you. We'll help you define best practices. Uh, what is best for your firm? Uh, phased in implementations are usually the most successful instead of trying to do everything in one shot. But we definitely will work with you and provide you the, our input on that. In terms of resources, typically, you will have uh, two planning consultants on, on staff with an infrastructure specialist, infrastructure specialist being part-time, um, with the planning consultants uh, on-site or off-site if necessary. Uh, depending, again, on the application, it could be three consultants. It could be one consultant. Again, it all depends on, on the size of the project. And on the outside, we always want to have available from your organization um, support from the finance and IT management side. Uh, we want to have those financial subject matter experts. Um, an FPA department uh, is great at getting everything together, but sometimes they don't know exactly how different business units uh, derive the revenue. And that's where we need to bring these people in for a uh, when needed. And of course, on the other IT resources to get data, data from outside uh, other external systems. So if we look at, start to look at customers that have, uh, have implemented Hyperion planning and the value that they've received. Uh, this is just a snippet of some of the companies that, that we have implemented Hyperion planning at across the vertical. And that's the beauty of Hyperion planning. It fits within any vertical. It's not just a manufacturing. It's not just a financial services. No, it's across the board. So it's a tremendous platform that adapts to any type of vertical. And these are some of, some of our customers that we've done work in. Specifically, if we look at uh, one customer, Charter Manufacturing, a uh, company um, that is privately held and they do steel components. If we look at the before, uh, Excel-based model for budget planning and forecasting. Uh, they had issues with consolidating the budgets and forecast. It was difficult and time consuming. No centralized workforce planning, inconsistent reporting. I know it's very minimal linkage between you know, the steel that they produced or sold and the associated costs. So we implemented Hyperion planning. Now they have a single comprehensive platform across the entire organization. They've in integrated some of the um, special modules or uh, newer modules that Hyperion built specifically to the two very granular levels of the uh, of budget planning, in particular in this case, uh, workforce planning, capital planning. Um, they have eliminated the uh, Excel-based planning tool completely, or models, I should say. Uh, no need for them anymore. But it's, well, all those models are now built into Hyperion planning. So what does that mean? What it means to them is that their processes have improved dramatically. They're able to finish the budget planning for casting processes much quicker, giving them more time for analysis and make adjustments and react to market conditions uh, with regards to that. They have now introduced a driver-based process that tightly links their sales and production and costs together, something that was actually pretty difficult to do in Excel. And they have full confidence in the C. And now they have complete transparency into their information. Now away from manufacturing to another vertical, a Morningstar. They're the leading uh, provider of independent investment research firm. Again, before Hyperion planning, all Excel-based models. Uh, not only are they use them for budget planning, but their performance calculations as well. Uh, they had complete inability to incorporate user 
comments and assumptions into the model. Just drop the number in and we'll see what happens when we consolidate it and then kind of ask questions later. Uh, the calculations were very inconsistent across the board. Um, the allocations process was difficult. Uh, things would change. People would make changes. Uh, no version, you know, workflow whatsoever. Uh, in order to do what are capabilities, it was just rebuild the spreadsheet process. Uh, and uh, the other thing was the fact that there was uh, a need for a, a process that incorporated the balance sheet and the cash flow. And that was really hard to do in, in the Excel environment with the changing rules and things of that nature. So once again, common theme here is a single comprehensive platform for planning, forecasting, and reporting. The elimination of these Excel-based planning models. Again, improved efficiencies. Standardization of calculations across the enterprise. Depending on the business unit, um, some business units want to have their own uh, calculation standards. And that's fine. That's perfectly fine. You can do that in, in Hyperion planning. Not an issue. And yet you can have the standardized calculations across the board. Now they were able to link their income statement to the balance sheet, to the cash flow in this application something they had a tremendous amount of difficulty doing before. Again, data integrity, consistency issues have been eliminated, and now the reviewers of the budget plan and forecast have visibility into the user assumptions. Don't have to wait for everything to come together. Don't have to start making phone calls, having emails fly out the door. Why this? Why that? Wait for response. They can see it. If they want to make a phone call, it's fine. You can do it. The fact that it's now in a self-contained application Bodes well to what Hyperion plans to do. So, how can we help you? So, what we are proposing is a or created a Hyperion planning program initiative, where we will come on site for half a day and do a planning evaluation, no cost, complimentary. Where we will actually do a presentation of Hyperion planning, so you can actually see it in action, see what it takes, see workflow and process, see supporting detail, everything I mentioned earlier. Uh, make sure that we, you have your subject matter experts so that we can understand your current process, start discussing future state, and then set out a timeline to, to make sure that we're, we're working together to get you to the point of being uh, an excellent uh, predictor of data, of, of information for your organization, help you drive profitability by being having that planning, budgeting, and forecasting excellence in place. And again, taking into consideration not just the, the budgets, the plans, the forecast, but the data. Where's the data coming from currently? You know, what are your reporting requirements? What do you want to do with metadata? What are your business events? Things of that nature. So really, a full-blown process in regards to that. Before I, we get into you know, how you can contact us, we are having our sixth annual um, Hyperion Performance Management and Business Analytics Networking event uh, in the Dyna Country Club on Wednesday, May 8th. Uh, it's from 8 to 1. It's a full day session. Uh, the afternoon is, is optional, but it, it's great that there's a lot of, hype, uh, of our customers there who are using Hyperion Planning that you can leverage, ask questions from, a lot of customer success stories, presentations by the customer themselves, not us. So it's a great day to hear from Oracle terms of what's coming down the pike, what are some of the things that are happening in the marketplace, but also you can talk to the customers, talk to people who are using the application, find out exactly what's their value, and network with people and, and get that. So again, that's Wednesday, May 8th, I'm at Diamond Country Club in Chicago. Uh, there you see the registration, uh, mtechinc.com slash events. Or if you have any questions, you can contact Erica at the email listed uh, on screen or the, the uh, phone number. So next steps would be, you know, take a look at the program offering. Uh, give us a call. We'll be more than happy to help you with Hyperion planning. Please contact Erica um, to, to discuss that, to, to, to get, get on the calendar. We'll be more than happy to come on out and talk to you about that. And with that, we will move to questions and answers. And again, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Erica, we'll turn it back to you. So again, if anybody has any questions, um, 
There's uh, the question box that's in the on the right hand panel, so please just type your questions in there um, because we, we did mute everyone uh, just for the sake of sound. Um, but we're happy to answer any questions. It doesn't look like there's anything coming through. No. Okay, that's fine. Well, that means I did. I must have done a good job. So I appreciate that. But again, really, as you go through this process, it really is important to 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 get help with this process. It, it's really there's a lot of moving parts that you need to take into consideration, not from the application side, but from your own processes internally. So we can help you with that. We can definitely help you down this path. So you know, please take advantage of the half day session. Um, again, it's complimentary. Uh, we'll help you through the whole process, um, and you know, we'll be more than happy to to ensure that you have a successful uh, implementation. That you get out of the spreadsheet mania and issues, get you into an application that will help you drive profitability and insight into your budget planning and forecasting process. And with that, I'd like to thank you all for taking the time today, and have a great day.